Journey. Freedom Tour 2023. Saturday, April 1st at FedEx Forum. Journey with very special guest, Toto. Tickets on sale now at journeymusic.com. Don't miss Journey Live. Memphis, it's about damn time. Lizzo presents the special tour 2023. FedEx Forum, April 26th. With special guest, Lotto. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. The album special is available everywhere now. For more, visit LizzoMusic.com. HBCU Huddle with me, CJ Hurt, and Mike Wallace has all of your HBCU football, sports, and culture needs covered. We discuss the hottest stories weekly across the black college sports landscape, including the SWAC, MEAC, Tennessee State, Lane, Lamorne Owen, and all the black colleges in between. New episodes drop every Thursday, and you can stay connected with the latest stories and discussions about your favorite HBCU by going to grindcitymedia.com, selecting the podcast folder, and clicking on the HBCU Huddle tab. HBCU Huddle is a spot for all your black college sports and culture needs. Let's see what we got. Whoa. Man, what shoe is this? This is our Jordan. It is. A Jordan 13? Is it a Jordan 13 low? Oh! Yeah. Here you go. Oh, hey. yes, sir. It's the show that brings you drip from around the NBA. Tune into the Sneak Fest show presented by Ten Toes Memphis, where we talk sneaker culture, fashion, shoe trends, and lots more. Join me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, Sherman, Jerry, and Adam every Tuesday live at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media. Know my first name ain't baby, it's Janet, Miss Jackson if you're nasty. Janet Jackson presents Together Again. A celebration of hits, plus brand new music live in concert with special guest Ludacris. FedEx Forum, Saturday, April 29th. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. For more, visit JanetJackson.com. Everybody always brings you up as one of the great trash talkers ever. Who was the best one to you? To Who me, did you the, think is the best talker? Larry Bird would tell you where he's going to shoot it in your face. He'd tell you you give you a Christmas gift. He said, I'm going to shoot it right here, and then I'm going to shoot it in the neck. going to just say, Shoo! and I guarantee you that. And he would go in that spot and shoot it in your face and do that. The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on GrindCityMedia.com or wherever you get your podcasts. in the Grind City Media Studios. Now, here's Jessica Benson. Good morning, everybody. It is time to rise and grind. Jessica Benson, CJ Hurt with you here on this President's Day, bright and early, to start off a new week. All-Star Weekend is behind us. I vow to have a very full show ahead of us, and we will keep it shorter than the all-star intros more entertaining than the all-star game itself and hopefully cj will have less mic issues than the tnt crew had all weekend long you didn't how much of all-star weekend were you able to watch you were in nashville for the she believes cup i caught the last quarter i guess the elam ending okay. i caught so which team what won? you whichever team won team Giannis. they were down they were i guess 10 12 points away from from the win and I caught mm. that. So I saw Jason Tatum set the the scoring record in the All-Star game, I guess is what that is. Sure it was. And that that was pretty much it. 
You did I, saw some, <laughs> I, I saw some some highlights. Well, listen, we we love the NBA on this show. We do. But all star games are what they are. It's and that just, goes for all all star games. All that goes them. for the Pro Bowl. That goes for Major League Baseball's all star game. That for some reason used to be appointment viewing in my life as a young tot. Uh, that goes for the NHL. It goes for everything. But I will say there are so many fun things to get to from All-Star Weekend as it pertains to the Memphis Grizzlies. We will hit all of those, but let's set the stage for today's show. Gary Parrish is going to join us around 8.30. He will talk about the Memphis Tigers, who put up a mighty fight yesterday against the number two team in the country in Houston without their best player. Came up short, but impressive performance by Penny's team against the Houston Cougars. We'll get all the college basketball news with GP. Then John Roser is going to join us live from Salt Lake City. He was there for all of the festivities. He also got himself a pair of John wa- jaw ones, so we hate him. He got all the jaw gear. I'm sure he will be showing it off on today's show. And then finally, we have a very special guest joining us in studio around 9, 10. Megan Triplett is home for the All-Star break. Megan Triplett, like the good old days, is going to drive all the way out from Collierville, Tennessee, into downtown Memphis, and then she's got to go see Mama Triplet. So we're on a tight schedule when it comes to Megan Triplet, but excited to catch up with her. CJ, before we dive fully into all things All-Star Game, how was the She Believes Cup in Nashville? In freaking incredible. It was amazing. I am going to, what are they, the American Outlaws? I'm coming your way. I got to figure out how to join. I'm joining the Outlaws because they're having so much fun banging on drums and chanting and stuff. Still don't know all the chants. I'm going to figure that out. And then the match was was superb. What Japan was able to do is one thing to watch like basketball on TV. Yeah. It's something else with larger fields, football, soccer specifically. Uh, because you you don't see everything that's happening. And so seeing the strategy as it plays out live in person on the field, it's like, oh, that's what they're doing. I We thought sitting on the couch, these people never get tired. They're just running around. No, you see them get visibly tired, see them get a little anxious and a little antsy and frustrated with everybody, um, coaching one another up, trying to get the ball exactly precisely where it's going to be, and you watch it all for that one moment, that one beautiful moment, and that goal was superb. Who was it? Was It, it was Swanson, Mallory right? Swanson, Mallory Swanson. Yeah. The, she is fast, fast. So fast to see that ball get through and to see her chase it down, gather herself and pit it into the back of the net. Oh, it was a great moment. Everybody's going insane. We're screaming and hollering and cheering. I'm looking around like, hey, y'all probably do this in your houses like I do. I'm not a weirdo. The amount of couch cushions that get hurled during a U.S. Women's National Team match in my house by me, astronomical. (laughs) Seeing everybody else uh, care about it the way that I care about it was great. And it was 25, 26,000. Yeah. I think they announced like 25, 3 or something like that. It was over 25,000 fans in attendance, and it felt like it was over 25,000 fans in attendance. It was, it was uh, so much, so much fun. So inspired, you're in your red, white, and blue. This I didn't morning. take it off. On President's Day. I didn't take it off. I have one President's Day fact before we dive into the Grizzlies. Are you ready for it? That. I got a newsletter this morning with the pets of former presidents. Oh, come Did you on. know Herbert Hoover had a possum? Did you know Calvin Coolidge had a raccoon? But more importantly, James Buchanan was gifted a herd of elephants. And Martin Van Buren. Who's he? Eighth president. Gifted a pair of tigers. Yeah, I was reading through that list and I was like, whew, my U.S. history is low on this President's Day. But that's it for President's Day. We got to dive right into All-Star. Yes, you have a question. Does President Streets run east-west downtown? Sure. And the numbers go north-south? Yes. Okay, just trying to make sure because I don't I don't recall Van Buren. I just Buren. know we have there's Monroe, Adams, Madison, yep, <laughs> Jefferson, Adams, Jefferson. There's a Washington. So do we not go up to? Is it there? Not eight of those streets downtown? I guess not. Okay, we just cut it we off. We don't we don't have point. a Buchanan. Wait, no. when was Buchanan? I don't, don't stop I'm asking sorry. me questions that are way too difficult on a Monday holiday morning. It was All Star Weekend, and despite. Mike Malone calling it the worst basketball he's ever watched. Not wrong. Not wrong. I had an absurd amount of FOMO 
this weekend when it came to the Memphis Grizzlies experience in Salt Lake City before I ruptured my Achilles. I was supposed to be there for some of these festivities and to watch them play out from Mount 12 ski to the game itself, to the Rising Stars Challenge, to Kenneth Lofton Jr., Ja Jaron, all of the Grizzlies representation throughout All-Star Weekend. I really, really, really will never get over the fact that I could not get a pair of Ja ones delivered to me via ice luge. That's something that will sting for a long time. Mount 12 ski needs to come to Memphis simply so I can get a pair of shoes delivered to me via ice luge. What Nike did for Ja to tip off this weekend, giving him the full superstar treatment. You have the scratch Ja ones there. They were available for purchase along with a lot of Ja gear. You had the ski patrol jackets. You had the giant ice sculpture out of the Ja one. Just everything was so cool and cold, literally, because it's Mount 12 ski. You had Jaw on ice. You had people coming and lining up for this pop-up shop because they love Jaw Morant and they want his gear. And this is what Nike did. And this is a little look at everything that you could possibly get. And we saw it starting to be built during our show on Friday. And then the final product was just more than you ever could have imagined. And it was such a perfect start to All-Star Weekend for Jaw, for the Grizzlies, for just the franchise in its totality. But that was like the debutante ball of superstardom from Nike for Ja Morant. And like Jason Tatum had a shoe reveal as well. I'm taking the Ja shoe reveal 10 out of 10 times. Uh, again, Mount 12 ski. Can it travel? Is this a traveling mountain? Once upon two years ago this week, CJ, we were skiing down on that hill down by the Mississippi River. I think it's the perfect location for Mount 12 ski 2.0. To come to Memphis. Bill Street Landing, and we can't there get go. there because they're doing the construction, construction on Tom Lee. Maybe we put it next to the other mountain in Memphis. Mount Mariah? Yeah. Let's do it. 12 ski, put it, put it right there. At the t- tippity top of Mount Mariah sits the precinct, and so you have the 12 ski, Mount 12 ski over that way. Why not? Everything was great. The pendant that Jaw was gifted from Nike um, just – the bling, the ice, the entire mood was set by this. And even the look on his face when he was gifted this and you see the Jaw logo, uh, able to put it on the chain, has that on the midnight version of the Jaw ones too, which we did learn are $400, which are a little pricey for moi, but those midnights are so sick. Like, that is one of the coolest shoes with that attached with it, with the Swarovski crystals, with the bottom blue little glittery situation there on the bottom. Um, All of that was great. So you have that. And then you're able to culminate with the game last night. And, like, the game is what it is. It's supposed to be fun. It's not good basketball. It's not. I wouldn't call it fun, though. (laughs) Well, watch, watching dudes trying to hit the game winner from beyond half court is, is kind of Once you quirky. Get, yes. it, it is kind of fun. Watching dudes run up and down the court just showing off feats of supreme athleticism with nobody defending is, is kind of fun. 360 dunks, the reverse dunks that we get to see, the remarkable displays of shooting. It's like, oh, these guys could these guys are really, really good, but it's not basketball in its most intended form. Sure, in its purest form. All of it. I had already, I watched a lot of All-Star content this weekend, and I still don't have cable or internet in my new home. Because since I last sat here, Chris and I became (laughs) homeowners, and we've moved in, and we still don't have cable or internet. So I had to go out of my way to figure out how to stream everything on my laptop, and we're bumming off of our neighbor's internet, which, shout out new neighbors, always appreciate some friendly faces when you move into a new place. Between my eyeballs bleeding during the skills challenge, (laughs) making it through, the three-point contest is always fun. The dunk contest ended up being actually a show, thanks to Mac McClung, and we will get into all of that. But then getting into the All-Star game itself on Saturday, and you had the pregame show. You had the selection, pick style between Giannis and LeBron, which could have been fun, should have been fun. Instead, it bled on and on and on, and you had some moments of levity, and Giannis thinking he could take Jaws a reserve, but oopsie, no, Jaws a starter, and then ultimately Giannis making everyone in Memphis mad because he split up Jaw and Jaren, and they had to play on opposite teams. That took forever. 
forever. Then just getting to the game itself took forever. And next thing you know, it's 7.45 Central Time. Game still hasn't started. The game itself drags. And then the most entertaining part of the game, like you said, as they're going for the game winner in an Elam ending, is the quickest part of the entire night. It's like, oops, okay, we're there. Jason Tatum, 55 points, game over. The halftime show, which was great, was also long because they put the extended LeBron James celebration all-time leading score. You, for some godforsaken reason, continued to trot Carl Malone out there as they did in Salt Lake City all weekend between being a dunk contest judge. Then he was back out there with Kareem and LeBron yesterday, and you're just like, really? This was necessary? Could have been an email. <laughs> He could have been an email. I didn't know they had Carl out there oh, doing stuff. Oh, you missed stuff. so much. I didn't miss it. I didn't. <laughs> you're, you're right. The, the all-star stuff isn't for everybody. It, it is for the younger people who you're trying to get in and become a mm-hmm. fan of your sport. That is who all-star games and contests are for, are for. They get to see a bunch of their favorite players going out there doing incredible things. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 year olds are out there with their little pop a shot goals trying to do 360 dunks and and take the ball in between their legs and be the next Mac McClung or whomever else threw down a dunk that they liked like that's who it's for um and it's great for that thing what did Jonathan Majors look like how did my boy we did not get to see enough nearly enough Jonathan Majors him and and Michael did the worst react to the McClung okay yes so I saw that but I didn't see anything else from the two they did a Creed three bit Oh, and no, I love both that. of them so much, and it flopped so hard. It just wasn't good. And then I wanted them to come back out, and all we got were their reactions to Mac McClung, which, fine. We all had our reactions to Mac McClung over the weekend, but not nearly enough Jonathan Major's time from All-Star Weekend. I'm just saying. And they really just sent Carl out there yes. nonstop. Yes. <laughs> like he was cool. Like multiple times. Like you get through, and, and the conversation starts being like, do people know – the full story of Carl Malone. About him and impregnating a 13-year-old. Okay. Yes. And then never having anything to do with the, the child. Well, I don't life. care and, about, and, like, absentee fatherism isn't a crime. Right. But it was a thir- 13 but the 13-year-old year old piece like, of that's, it. That's, yeah. That's an issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, just when you thought you couldn't see him again, they decide to honor LeBron James again, and it drags out that halftime show. I'm not here to talk about Carl. We've already talked too much about Carl Malone. And him impregnating a 13-year-old and him as a grown-up. A, a grown man. He was 20 years old. Uh, grown. An adult. Yeah. Grown. A young adult. Grown. She's 13. She's 13. She's, she's, she's. I believe she was actually 12 at the time and then was 13 by birth. I did some further research onto what? it. But we just used the 13 because that's, yeah. But back to John Jaron at All-Star Weekend because that's what I was focused on. And to be able to see the side-by-side images of from when John Jaron were in the Rising Stars Challenge themselves a few years ago to then stepping into the light of being actual All-Stars, John and All-Star starter again. There they are, little baby-faced, ready to see the NBA world. And then here they are. Well, here they are in the Rising Stars game, and you have that image. But here they are yesterday ahead of their first All-Star appearance together, the first time we ever saw two Grizzlies players sharing the All-Star court together in franchise history. And I love this picture in connection with that picture from the Rising Stars challenge because here's the thing. So much of the talk was about what would happen if Ja and Jaron ended up being on opposite teams. And Giannis puts the Grizzlies in that position, so you have Ja versus Jaron. And we had this moment where Jaron decided to pick up Ja around full court, runs with him, Ja goes past, and Jaron makes a business decision. And ultimately, well, first we had Ja doing what Ja does. I swear, CJ, you missed this within the All-Star game. If you had drank every time somebody begged Ja Morant to do the dunk contest throughout the entirety of the weekend, you would have been done. Toast. And then there he goes around Jaron Jackson Jr. Jaron makes the business decision. But it's that image of Jaron smiling behind Ja, just like very a la Jaron smiling behind Ja in the Rising Stars Challenge when they were on the same team, that just speaks to what this team is, that just speaks to what this moment was for the Grizzlies, for what it means for the future of these two being the cornerstones of this franchise. And... If Jaron, whether he's on his Jaws team or is not on his team in an all-star format, he's his dude. And he's always going to be there hyping Jaw in the background. And you know, Jaron was not about to block Jaw 
in this all-star economy. There is no defense being played whatsoever. Jaren's not going to go out there and block his own real-life teammate, his own real-life friend. You did have like some one-on-one -on -one action between Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, and I'm all for that. I think the skills competition should be replaced with one-on-one -on -one games between teammates because that adds intrigue. But Jaren wasn't going to do it to John in the midst of that game. And instead, you're given another image that will come back to at some point when these two have hopefully made many and many of all-star appearances and said, look at the first time they shared a court together in an actual all-star game from the rising stars to the all-star to whatever their futures and beyond. And you know what? I got a little emotional looking at that picture because it was sweet because we've watched them grow here in Memphis. And now you had a national stage where everyone else got to see it too. You can't spell NBA all-star weekend with a D. Ain't no D in NBA all-star no. weekend. Just leave the D off of the, the end of weekend. No big D, no little D. None, 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 none at all. Oh gosh. Terrible joke came to my mind. I'll fast forward. Uh, I, that's cool to see. That's it is on good. growth, CJ. Yeah, because it is it is wildly inappropriate. You want me to tell it to you? I'll tell it to you. I'll turn the mics off after I say this. Okay. Um, it's cool to see, and it's wild to think that you never got a, unfortunately, never got a Mike Conley, Zach Randolph, Mark Gasol duo or trio in, in the All-Star game. But this is where the franchise is now, where you've got not one, but two legitimate candidates for all NBA type of performers, Jaron on the defensive side and Ja just in general. The, the Grizzlies as a franchise are in good, young, capable hands. That's the joke. I knew <laughs> that that was, I could have written that joke in my head and known it was going to come out of your mouth. And I love that the camera was on you. So if you have any lip readers out there, they would be able to do it as well. But no, it was, you know, it's never about like your actual production in an all-star game. Ja finishes with six points, three assists. Jaron finishes with six points in eight minutes. Only played eight minutes. On Team Giannis, the winning team, you had Jason Tatum, who had 55, Mitchell and Damian Lillard, 77 shot attempts. The other nine players on Team Giannis had 46 combined shot attempts. That is just goofy. Like, what, are, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, what are you doing? What am I doing? Yes, Showing you, actual statistics from what, an All-Star game? What are you doing? It's, it's just a moment. Just let the moment happen, and then okay. let the moment pass, and all we'll right. go back to it in the totality of what it all means. There were literal people who were like... Jason Tatum, and I get that it's a real thing. Jason Tatum becomes the first player in NBA history to have 50-point games in the regular season, the postseason, and the All-Star game. And I'm like, golly gee, who gives a – I can't say that word. Who gives a – and then also, in the past, the elders of the game were never letting – Anyone score 50 points in an all-star game. I don't care that there's not been defense for a long time. Like, you still weren't going to get up 50 on all-star weekend. And so, uh, miss me with that. But I love the fact that the Grizzlies were such a big part of it. I love the fact that Kenneth Lofton Jr. got a little bit of his shine as well as a rising star. He was in the G League Showcase game as well. We'll talk to Johnny Hustle, John Roser, about everything he saw from Kenneth Lofton Jr. I saw him front row with his eyes on the dunk contest on Saturday night. Um, but ultimately, it was cool. I will never forgive Giannis for making it so that Jaron Jackson Jr. was the last pick because there was so much conversation around Adam Silver's decision to have them pick the reserves before the starters so that there wouldn't be a feeling of a last pick. I'm like, there's still a last pick. Whoever's the last reserve pick is still the last pick. And at first I was like, well, this is a stupid conversation to begin with because they're all-stars, they're millionaires, they're some of the best basketball players in the world being highlighted as the best of the best right now. Why would anyone's feelings be hurt? And then my feelings were hurt that Jaron Jackson Jr. was the last pick. I was like, come on. Let's take it a step further. Okay. Let's go with this. Let's get a reserve pool Ooh. together with, I don't know, what are we going to say? Six or seven more reserves than you actually need. And then let's do this. And so I have everybody show up to All-Star Weekend. You pick the players at the right before the start of the game. And the other six or seven, forget being the last player selected, the other six or seven aren't selected at it. all. I like it. So they have to sit out and just watch all of this happen. Dressed in their full NBA attire. Let's I like get that it. going. You even saw, you saw Jokic. It was down to Jokic and Lori Markkinen at the end there. And... Uh, Jokic was like, I'm not being picked last. He got up. He was like, thank you, LeBron. You're picking me. <laughs> Next. Giannis, take your last pick. Enjoy the way.
Um, couple of just random notes from the game itself. Shout out to Candace Parker, first woman to call an NBA All-Star game. Loved hearing her on the call. I actually had it in my notes. CJ did not get enough Michael B. Jordan and Jonathan Majors okay. content. Thank you. It's right there, written. So glad we already got to that. Before we get to Gary Parrish, quick notes on the dunk contest because, like I said, after suffering through that skills competition, we all earned some form of excitement. That skills competition was brutal. And even though Giannis played like two seconds in the All Star game itself, he went, he scored, he got his points, he went back to the bench and said, Okay, I've been injured this weekend. I'm not going to play anymore in this game last night. Um, they had the Antetokounm bros, and without Giannis, the Antetokounm bros with Drew Holiday as a fill-in, taking on the Rooks, taking on the Utah team. Jordan Clarkson looked so much of the epitome of, I don't want to be here in the first round of that skills challenge. He didn't deserve to hold the trophy when Salt Lake City's team, when Team Jazz ended up winning the skills challenge. So that was that. Uh, Damian Lillard shoots the lights off three-point contest yes yes and then you get to the dunk contest where Mac McClung tried to warn us he tried to tell us that he was going to go out there and do dunks that we had never seen he had at least two in his back pocket and the look from Trey Murphy there was just like this is how it's gonna go down I'm really gonna lose to Mac McClung. Mac McClung, who signed a two-way deal with the Sixers on Valentine's Day. And now Mac McClung got the dunk contest trophy from Dr. J himself. That was his first rounder. He signed a Puma deal this month. He made almost more in one night than he has made in his entire career. He had a boatload of viral highlight dunks when he was in high school. He played half of his college career at Georgetown, the other half at Texas Tech. Um, ultimately, he's been a G League player trying to find his way in the NBA. He made a name for himself. Mac McClung. Looked like a Disney Channel movie. It, it looked like a Disney Channel luck original of the movie. Irish. The, luck he, of the he Irish. Looked real luck of the Irishes. <laughs> he did. He did. It just, it had the script written all over it, and the celebration of everyone around him at the end uh, was perfection. Trey Murphy tried. Like, I loved his first round dunk. He had Jose Alvarado come and do the little, like, sneaky steal as a stunt. Uh, his dunks were good. They just weren't Mac McClung great. But the fact that now everyone has had to use the Will Mac McClung inspire Ja Morant to do the dunk contest? No. Ja has said it. You can make the joke, whatever. Ja has said it over and over and over again. He's not doing it. Stop asking him. Or if you do ask him, just recognize he's not going to do it. But I find it hysterical that now it is Mac McClung's name that is attached. And Mac McClung, he's going to come back and do it next year. And the year after. And the year after. He will now be the continuous dunk contester, I'll call it. You'd rather have the dunk contest be that than loaded with stars who aren't going to do good dunks. True. And star power matters. So if you get a dunk contest with LeBron James, John Morant, and I don't know, the, the ghost of Dr. J or something like that, right? Like that dunk contest will go down as a pretty good dunk contest because of the star power. But dunk contests in general, while yes, we think about Michael Jordan and Dominique going back and forth. But remember when Dwight Howard and Nate Robinson were going back and forth? And Nate Robinson is just a role player at the time. We love those dunk contests. Who was dunking with Vince Carter that made him pull out the in between Ugh. the legs? It wasn't Jameson. It was, oh, now why am I, I blanking I on his remember. name? Either way it goes. It is those, see, that's, that's how minuscule some right. of these dudes are in their NBA career. Is Oh, they're a role player. They're a rotation guy. And they got up. They can get up. So as long as you've got a bunch of dudes who can get up and give us cool moments like that, and NBA does, the dunk contest will be fine. You don't have to be so thirsty for a dunk contest featuring, I don't know, LeBron, James, Giannis, and, and Ja. That, that would be great from a star standpoint, but what McClung and others gave the, the viewers on Saturday, that's important also. Mac McClung can be invited to every dunk contest. And as it was pointed out in the chat, he did pass all social media investigations from over the weekend. Uh, Jericho Sims should never be able to do the dunk contest ever again after the stunt he pulled with the 50 piece of paper coming out of his pocket at the end. No, 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 no. We, don't, we can't even talk about it. It was disgusting behavior for the dunk contest. But we have to take a break because we got to keep things tight today. Gary Parrish joins us on the other side. We'll take a little all-star break, talk to him about the Memphis Tigers' big performance in a loss against Houston yesterday. We'll be back with more here on Rise and Grind. The
The Grizzlies and Orion have partnered to help Grizz fans find their home court. Orion's home loan options help you finance your biggest dreams. Fans can sign up for more information on Orion's home loan options and for the chance to win two floor seat tickets to a Grizzlies game. Visit grizzlies.com slash Orion home loans for official rules. That's grizzlies.com slash Orion home loans. Equal housing lender. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis. The Grizzlies' official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover. Take Five, the stay in your car 10-minute oil change. Hey ladies, it's your girl Big Sue. Let's have some real talk about these fibroids and how they're causing you to miss out on life events. Doubling up on your products when you do leave the house, only to keep running to the bathroom because of the bladder pressure. Or maybe you're dealing with pelvic pain so intense it nearly takes your breath away. Be present and win your life back with the Fibroid team at VIP. Proud sponsors of the Memphis Grizzlies. Call 901-747-1007. That's 901-747-1007. Or online at VIP Fibroid. Fibroid.com. Hungry as a bear? Grizzlies fans can score big by ordering their favorite combos. If you pick up the Burrito Supreme combo from your local Taco Bell through February 21st, you'll score a key tag good for a free Nacho Cheese Doritos Locos Taco on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free tacos at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Available at participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Nacho fries are back at Taco Bell. You know, the fries covered in bold Mexican spices you dip in a warm nacho cheese sauce. You could also dunk them in a nacho cheese sauce or pour the sauce onto a pile of them and create like a nacho fries nachos. The thing is that you eat them with nacho cheese sauce. That's what makes them nacho fries. Otherwise, you're just eating fries and sipping on nacho cheese sauce, and that's the wrong way. Sorry, just really passionate about nacho fries. Nacho fries are back, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation, which vary. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit Grizzly. Grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Sonic has something delicious for you. Hey, announcer guy, that's your cue. Indulge in the all-new Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger with creamy steak seasoned butter and crispy bacon stacked on a 100% pure beef patty with two slices of melty American cheese and grilled onions layered between a warm bakery bun. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely craving that previously mentioned thing. Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger. Mmm, Sonic. Limited time only or participating Sonic drive-ins. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. It is Monday, and it is time to catch up with our friend Gary Parrish. GP's in New York City, joining us via Skype. GP, how's it going? Not sure if he's ready yet. Just kidding. Not <laughs> sure if he's ready. It's going great, Whenever Jessica, Gary's ready, how just are start you? talking. What'd you say? I was telling Gary, whenever he's ready, just start talking. Right. We'll throw him up. We'll just get him back in there in the mix. Do you have me? Oh, I have you now. There he is. Can you hear me now? I've been, I've been <laughs> here the whole time. How are you guys doing? Oh, we are doing fantastic. This morning, GP, how are you? Wonderful, just enjoying a, 
I don't know, kind of cloudy, overcast day in the city, but I'm inside, so it doesn't affect me at all. That's fine. It's a cloudy kind of overcast day in Memphis, but it's allegedly going to be 70 degrees later, so I'm into it. <laughs> is, is yeah, any, I'll, I'll, Gary, is there any way to get the camera on, or is, are you so uh, chill right now you don't want to be seen? No, my cam. as far as I can tell, my camera is on. I can see you guys. I don't understand why you can't see me. <laughs> That's in all fact, right. In fact... Skype indicates that my camera is on. In fact, it, it, when I go to the camera button, it says, if you want to turn it off, click here. And I'm like, that, that, that suggests it's on. I don't, I don't know. Do you have anything covering up the little camera spot so your federal <laughs> agent doesn't see you? No, I would never. I've seen Mark Zuckerberg do that before, which, which suggested to me that maybe I should do it, given all the things I could be caught doing, uh, just walking around, uh, just walking around, broadly speaking. But uh, uh, no, nothing's covering up my camera. If you can't see me, I don't know why. Well, it's okay. You're invisible to us, but we can hear your voice, which is the most important thing, because, GP, we have to talk about... The Memphis Tigers, who had their biggest conference game thus far of the season yesterday, and they had to play it without their best player, and still they kept it incredibly competitive against the number two team in the country in Houston. We are never a fan of moral victories, but were you impressed with how the Tigers managed to press Houston to the end yesterday? Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't want to overstate it. I, I never felt like they were going to, to win the game, but... Um, Let's well, let's see if I can figure this out. Hold on. <laughs> now I'm now I'm curious. Is it possible you have me now? No. No. We don't have you at all. So so should we this this works whenever I try and troubleshoot something or call somebody to right. trouble troubleshoot. Can we try hanging up and calling you back? You, absolutely. I right. I'd be welcome. I'd be open to that. Sure. Okay, let's try that then. We're going to dial it down. We're going to dial it all back right, we'll up. We'll get them back. Otherwise, we're just going to have to wake up with Rob style this and turn on some music and start dancing as Let's Gary go. Parrish graces got, us I with his takes music. from the Tigers game. You ain't said I understand to me, as, he, as he dials back. I certainly understand not overinflating what the Tigers did yesterday, but that game was a hell of a lot more entertaining than I expected it to be. Having to ultimately turn on, and again, I have no cable or internet. Do you know how difficult it was? I don't understand why my smart TV doesn't have the ESPN app available to download. I promise. I've troubleshooted it myself. It is not there. So in order to watch ESPN, I can log on to my Hulu account, and sometimes it gives some live options. Like I was able ES- to tune into the Plus. You can Genesis. watch ESPN Plus. Games. Right. The game yesterday didn't pop up. The only Houston game was Houston softball taking on Cal. And no knock to them. It's not what I was looking for. I could watch some of the Genesis Invitational using my neighbor's Wi-Fi, using ESPN+, Plus, but I could not do Memphis Houston, so I had to fire it up on the good old laptop and keep it on my lap. And when you watch a game on your laptop and you can't move, it gets so hot. Your, your computer is a piece of fire. Is Gary back on? No camera, but he's on. No camera, but he's on. I don't, I, I, I don't know what I could do other than hit the buttons that I've hit. <laughs> it's okay. We've had this happen many a times. You're not alone in this problem. <laughs> I know because if you cast an ESPN broadcast or a TNT broadcast, which I learned this week, it just is a black screen. It's like Gary. You can hear it, but you can't watch it. So I was busy having to watch every single sporting event on my computer over the weekend, and I'm cranky about it still. But it was worth watching the Memphis Houston game because it was entertaining. We got it! <laughs> Am I here? Look at me. You're here. Look at you. Look at that New York City I told you, skyline. I told you it was cloudy in New York City. I told you it was cloudy back there. It is cloudy. Look at that. That's called teamwork makes the dream work on a Monday morning. <laughs> Memphis, teamwork, uh, the dream doesn't work. They lose. It's tough. You always knew Houston was going to be tough. It's tougher without Kendrick Davis. But your takeaways from part one, we'll get this game again in Memphis at the end of the regular season. Yeah, well, what... what- what yesterday indicated is that um, the Tigers can't play with this team. You know, if you can go to Houston and be competitive with them without Kendrick Davis, then when that next game rolls around inside FedEx Forum in in front of what I would assume would be a great crowd, uh, you're going to have a lot of things uh, working for you. That gives you a, a fighting chance. I guess I would say this. When you are a bubble team playing literally the number one team in the country, which is what Houston should be later today, what Houston is at, at Ken Palm and, and other computers. Some of it is a mental thing. Like, do you believe you can actually play with these guys? I, I've seen Houston play. Um, I've, I've worked the Houston game uh, earlier this season on the sideline. 
Um, it was Houston St. Joseph's at the Na U.S. Naval Academy very early in the season. And you could just sort of sense, like, St. Joe's wasn't trying to win that game. They were trying not to get blown out. Like, they knew what they were up against. Uh, this is different. I, I think whether you're DeAndre Williams or Keontae Kennedy or Elijah McCadden or Penny Hardaway, you walk out of there yesterday going, you know what? We could beat those guys. We could beat those guys when we get them in our building and when we have our point guard back. So that's the, the good news. Um, as for yesterday's game, it was one of those where – they hung around, and that's obviously better than not hanging around. And they had it at five with the ball with a little more than two minutes to r remaining. That's a good spot to be. But I, there was never a moment where I was like, oh, wow, Memphis might win this game. It, it always felt like when Houston needs to go get six straight, they'll go get six straight. When Houston needs to get three straight stops or two straight, they'll go get those. And even after the game, I don't know if you saw Kelvin Sampson's post game, but he said, listen, um, this is not a beauty contest. Uh, you know, we, that was not an A game from us. We did not play well. It wasn't pretty, but my guys win. Like that, my guys know how to win games, and they literally have the best winning percentage in the country uh, in Division One men's basketball. They're now twenty-five and two. There's somebody with more wins, but there is nobody with a better winning percentage. There's nobody with stronger computer numbers, and so um, you. Know, it, it now leads to the question. I understand of of. You know, what, what does Memphis have to do to win the NC, uh, to make the NCAA tournament? And I, I, I gather there's this prevailing thought that they got to beat Houston or they can't make it. And that's just not true. I, I don't know how to overemphasize that, but it's it, it's not true because it's not true. I even talked to Jerry Palm about this, like literally this weekend. And he said it might be hard to make the NCAA tournament without a win over Houston, if only because that win over Houston qualifies as like a big win, another quad one win. But he was very clear with me. They can. There is a path to making the NCAA tournament without beating Houston. Eh, obviously, it's going to matter what else happens around the country. But logically, putting the bar there doesn't make any sense whatsoever here's here's why as of this weekend memphis was in the field according to most bracketologists certainly jerry palm certainly joe lenardi the two most famous because they're connected to big television networks now how can you say you're in the field without a win over houston but if you don't get a win over literally the best team in the country you 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 don't belong to be just on the you don't deserve to be just on the right side of the bubble like Take any bubble team that is, you know, hanging out where Memphis is hanging out in the projected bracket. None of them is supposed to beat Houston. Literally nobody in the country on a neutral court is supposed to beat Houston, especially not at Houston. You know, you're never supposed to win that game. So the idea that you would set the bar there for a bubble team doesn't make any sense. Uh, obviously, it'll be uh, much easier to get into that bracket with a win over Houston inside FedEx Forum. But I still am of belief if Memphis wins literally every game it plays between now and Selection Sunday, except for what would presumably be two more games against Houston, Memphis will make the NCAA tournament. Uh, you, you, uh, the idea that that's the pass fail, you've got to beat Houston or else, that's just, that's, that's just fundamentally not true. Gary, have you heard anything about when Kendrick Davis and others are expected to rejoin this team? And what does Penny Hardaway do with Alo and Dandridge when they get back. Well, you know the Dandridge thing is is easy because you just you know you you play him the minutes that you feel like he deserves and you know that that's not being dis. It's not like Memphis has an All American option in front of Mal Malcolm Dandridge. Right. But but Kendrick Davis is an All American. He's literally one of the best college basketball players in, in the country and. Um, I actually agreed with, and I'm not even suggesting he could have played yesterday, but I was on record, like, even if he's 80%, 75%, don't play him, because you're probably not winning at Houston anyway, and so you don't want to risk him re-injuring that, uh, re that ankle. Also, um, you can always say, like, th this is now a positive. We played Houston tight at Houston without our best player. Like, that's something the selection committee watched knows and understands so you're better off if you're going to lose that game anyway and you're probably going to lose that game anyway like i think memphis closed as a 14 point underdog but even with kendrick davis they were going to close as a 12 11 point underdog they were going to be a double digit underdog no matter what so if you're going to lose that game it's better to lose it without kendrick davis so that was smart now it comes down to when can he come back against these lesser teams because 
you you still have to win those games. If you lose another not Houston game, you will definitely find yourself on the wrong side of the bubble. So uh, listen, I'm not in that training room. I uh, you know I, I, I high ankle sprains and, and just ankle and foot and lower leg stuff. Jessica, as you know, can be complicated. So <laughs> <Sure> can <laughs> so so w- w- we'll see. But you know, Penny Hardaway. I, I think the issue people have is the visual. The initial visual of Kinder Davis is like on crutches in a boot. Right. And that, that suggests, oh, wow, this is going to be a minute. But Penny Hardaway has now said multiple times, I don't think it's as bad as it looked. It's better today than it was then. I don't know if he'll play in the next game, but I'd be shocked if he's not back, certainly by by next week. And that's certainly your ultimate hope because like you said I keep going back to what you said last week in that sure you don't have to beat Houston to make the NCAA tournament but there are so many landmines within the AAC and that's the detriment of playing in a conference where if you lose a game like that against a lesser opponent it's tough and when you're playing without your best player it all comes down to where are you getting your consistent scoring on this team without Kendrick Davis can you make up for it in a game where you play your butts off against Houston sure but can that bite you any given night yeah yeah, like losing to Houston without Kenner Davis is not a big deal. Like right. Memphis's Ken Palm number actually increased yesterday from 39 yeah. up to 36 with the loss. Now, um, so that that doesn't no, I I the the brackets like from Jerry Palm and Joe Lenardi they haven't updated yet, but when they do, I think what you'll see is Memphis is still on the right side of the bubble. But you can't go lose to Wichita State without Kendrick Davis. You can't go lose to Cincinnati without Kendrick Davis. And you cannot lose to SMU with or without Kendrick Davis. So it is wildly more important that he is ready to play against Wichita State, Cincinnati, SMU than he was ready to play against Houston yesterday. So what you hope is uh, that, you know, and this is sort of one of the advantages of of a typical AAC schedule. Like Kansas played Saturday and got turned around and played tonight. In the AAC, you it's, they often work on a Saturday, Sunday, and then a Thursday. And so you get a few extra days than most college basketball teams are going to get this week to play their next game. And so that's obviously a good thing. You want to have him going inside Coke Arena. Uh, but if you don't, uh, then you, you, you'd love to have him for the home game uh, against Cincinnati. Because these next three, and I, I, I'm certain I've said this before, I still believe it to be true, these next three games are bigger than the last one. The, the last one is going to be the one that is on national television, got a lot of people's attention, going to draw the biggest crowd. But the next three, if you told me right now, Jessica, that Memphis could go three and one with a win over Houston but a loss to Wichita State, or they can go three and one with wins over Wichita State, Cincinnati, SMU, but a loss to Houston, Give me the three and one with the loss to Houston. Three and one with the loss to Houston, you're still probably okay. Another bad loss is gonna is gonna be complicated for your at-large resume. Uh, we're talking resumes, and you brought up Houston, presumably the new number one team in the nation in the AP poll. Who would be your four one seeds as of right now? Well, the selection committee had that bracket preview show on CBS over the weekend, and they got it exactly right, or at least exactly the way I would have done it. I I, might have mixed up the order a little bit and had Houston the number one overall seed as opposed to Alabama, but the four schools they got got right. It's it's Houston, it's Alabama, it's Purdue, and it's Kansas. And I always love that bracket reveal show, not because it's on CBS, but because I spent three months before that that thing ever happens ranking 26 basketball teams every single morning, and every single morning there's somebody out there ready to call you an idiot, or <laughs> or insist you're biased, or put all sorts of labels on you. They every single day there are people who tell me I don't know what I'm doing, and then you just do it again tomorrow and you deal with the same sort of backlash. And then this bracket preview show comes out. And you know what happens? It lines up exactly. <laughs> Like I've been saying, it's going to line up all season long. Of the 16 teams that are projected top four seeds, according to the selection committee this weekend, 15 of them were in the top 16 of the top 25 and one on Saturday morning. The lone exception, um, they had Indiana. I had Miami. But, I mean, we're quibbling there. I I had Miami as a four seed, Indiana as a five. They have Indiana as a four seed, Miami as a five. But it largely lines up with the way I go about doing things and so um i you know i every 
year after that show, we do a quick like 20, 25 minute podcast, uh, the Ion College Basketball Podcast, and we discuss it. And, you know, uh, you get asked, so what do you think of the bracket uh, projections from the selection committee? And I say, yeah, it looks, looks right to me because this is what I've been doing every day for three months. And so um, they, they got the one seeds right. I think they pretty much got the two seeds right. Again, 15 of the 16 we matched up on. Um, you know, in that bracket reveal. And then, of course, the game start on Saturday and it changes a little bit. You know, Indiana added another nice win. Tennessee took another questionable loss. If you were doing it again today, you would do it a little differently. But to answer your question, CJ, the number one seeds at this moment, to me, are pretty clear cut. It doesn't mean that they're cemented, like they're going to be there on Selection Sunday. But I don't see how you could put a bracket together today that doesn't have the top four seeds as Houston, Alabama, Kansas and Purdue in some order. I don't know if you saw me. I had to answer the phone I, over I there. I saw who who was on the phone. UCLA fans are hot. Oh, they oh, they did not like that answer that you gave. Gary. I, I was fine. They well, were, they were usually very I'm angry. all for very angry respecting the Pac-12. Well, here, but here, here's what, and I do think, and Mick Cronin was hot too. The UCLA coach mm-hmm. he even trotted out like a, a conspiracy theory tied to <laughs> the that. idea, tied to the idea that um, there are selection committee members who have been damaged by UCLA's decision to leave the Pac-12 mm. for the Big Ten, and now the UCLA men's basketball program is paying a price. So out on the West Coast now, we've got Kyrie Cronin uh, throwing stuff out like that. <laughs> but <laughs> I think Let me just put that in every single USC message board. We'll just uh, call him Kyrie Cronin uh, from here Ky- on out. Kyrie Cronin was on one this weekend, but uh, I do think he's right in the sense that UCLA was underseeded. I don't think it's tied to UCLA leaving the back playoff. I think it's just that sometimes these people don't do their job the right way, or they they mess up uh, like like all, most um, humans do. And so the issue for UCLA, and this is what happens, um, UCLA fans, it, it, it's honestly the same thing's been going on with Tennessee fans for for weeks. Um, they look at their Ken Palm ranking, which is really high, right. and their use in their net ranking, which is really high. And then they say, how could you have us lower than that? What sometimes people who say things like that miss is that your net ranking matters and your Ken Palm number matters. But more than anything, your body of work matters. And UCLA has a, a not so great body of work. Now, this is a, 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 the best team in the Pac-12, in my opinion. But they're still just five and four in quadrant one. Like we talk about the other projected, uh, you know, elite teams. Houston is uh, three games above 500 in quadrant one. Alabama, three games above 500 in quadrant one. Purdue, five games above 500 in quadrant one. Kansas, eight games above 500 in quadrant one. UCLA's one game above 500 in quadrant one. So they don't have bad losses, but they don't have as many quad one wins as, as Alabama, Purdue, Kansas. And they don't have the winning percentage inside that first quadrant as Houston. I would have UCLA as the best number two seed. So that's better than where the committee has them, which is the worst number two seed. But again, we're we're talking about a a very minor difference there. And, you know, if, if Mick wants to know why they were projected where they're projected, it's tied to I think they were misevaluated by the committee. But the idea that they should be a one seed connected to, to uh, in front of any of the teams we've established, uh, the resume does not suggest that at all. GP, appreciate you joining us from cloudy NYC on camera and all. We'll see you next week. Have hey, safe travel uh, back. Are, are we doing this thing after the show? Gary, do you know? These are live production I, meetings. I didn't think it made any sense to do it uh, cool. via Skype and whatever. So we will we'll skip it this week and gotcha. get back in studio next week. Uh, when I am uh, back in Memphis after what will be, I believe, 12 straight nights in this hotel. Wow. <laughs> yes. All right. We'll see you back here very right. soon. We got to take All a right. break because we've got to get to John Roser running a little behind on this Monday morning because, of course, we are. We'll be back with Roser from SLUT. That's Salt Lake, Utah. I don't know if you saw that graphic used over the weekend. <laughs> Get your Mardi Gras beads ready. Fat Tuesday Memphis is opening on Fat Tuesday, February 21st. The world's most famous daiquiri bar is opening on Main Street and will be the official pregame party destination for your Memphis Grizzlies. Try the famous Fat Tuesday 190 Octane, Cat 5 Hurricane, or Miami Vice. Or create your own signature drink with 12 delicious flavors to choose from. 
Grab your friends and book your next birthday party or girls' night out at the new Fat Tuesday Memphis, located at 8 South Main Street, where we get the party started. Socios is the first of its kind in fan influence and rewards. Through the Socios app, you can influence the team you love, connect with other fans, trade, and compete for rewards. Socios.com is the official crypto wallet and trading exchange for some of the biggest sports teams and franchises in the world, like FC Barcelona, Juventus, the UFC, and now they are an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. Download the Socios app wherever you download your apps, create an account, participate, and win. Grizzlies fans know it's the team that gives you the edge. Big River Steel does too. That's why we're looking for team members to reinvent the steel industry, much like the Grizzlies are reinventing basketball. Our edge starts with you at www.bigriversteel.com. That's www.bigriversteel.com. Sonic has something delicious for you. Hey, announcer guy, that's your cue. Indulge in the all-new Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger with creamy steak seasoned butter and crispy bacon stacked on a 100% pure beef patty with two slices of melty American cheese and grilled onions layered between a warm bakery bun. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely craving that previously mentioned thing. Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger. Mmm, Sonic. Limited time only at participating Sonic Drive-Ins. Breathing easy requires good lung health. However, there are signs your lungs may not be healthy. A persistent cough may be a warning sign of lung disease, such as COPD, asthma, post-COVID lungs, or cancer. Other symptoms to look out for include feeling short of breath, wheezing, losing weight, coughing up blood, or chest pain. Don't ignore or dismiss these symptoms. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialists at 901-276-2662 to schedule your lung health screening. It's a matter of life and breath. Sauced by Will Smith is taking the championship taste of FedEx Forum. Come enjoy your favorite lineup of sauces on traditional and boneless wings the next time you see the Memphis Grizzlies play. All of your favorite sauces, including the famous Garrick sauce, are now available as you cheer the home team on. Visit Sauced by Will Smith inside FedEx Forum at your next Grizzlies game or come visit us anytime at our location in South Haven, Mississippi. Championship sauce, championship taste. Come get sauced today. Grizzlies fans, super exciting news from Cintron Sparkling Energy Drink, the official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Cintron has combined all three of their delicious flavors into a limited edition six-pack sampler box. Try Cintron's great-tasting cranberry classic and sugar-free all-in one pack. Cintron Sparkling Energy Drinks deliver long-lasting energy, are gluten-free, and have no preservatives, and have less calories and sugars than other energy drinks. Hurry and pre-order your Cintron six-pack sampler box today at CintronWorld.com slash Grizzlies. Welcome back to Rise and Grind. John Roser joins us now from Salt Lake City, Utah. John Roser, how was your all-star weekend? Look at the mountains. They look gorgeous. Look at the view from my hotel room. Wow. We, is that Mount Twelveski there in the back? Might be Mount Twelveski. No, I'm dead serious. I just like went through. So I had to like, I got a, I got a new company laptop. And so I was like, you, they allow you to change your backgrounds on here. And I was like, what's the closest thing to mountains that I can find? And this was like the only one I could find. That's no. the one I'm considering that you're there. I'm sitting in my boring hotel room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Well, it was an anything but boring weekend. And I want, as someone who was there, I'm going to ask you the best thing you saw this weekend and the worst thing you saw this weekend. But let's start with the best thing you saw. The best thing I saw, Mac McClung. <laughs> Mac McClung. <laughs> who would have thought we'd be saying that coming out of the weekend? Yeah. I mean, Mac McClung in the dunk contest. Because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't just the dunks he did. It's the fact that like he made them on his first yep. attempt. Like, that, Every that's single it. one. That's everything, and that's why I think um, was it? I can't remember who. Someone, someone had a really good. I may have been Kenyon Martin Jr. Like had a really good dunk, but it took him three times to get in the first round. It, it, yes, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he got docked, and he got docked for it. So, um, and that's why. Like it, it matters when you make it. So yeah, I would say that's the best thing um, as far as like involving the All Star 
you know, all-star game, all-star weekend that I saw involving like actual basketball. Um, overall, I would say the bet, like the best thing I saw is the city. Okay. This city is beautiful. It is. It, it is like Salt Lake city is gorgeous. Like I was, I'm like blown away by this place. Like I, I really love this city. It I, is so nice. I think Salt Lake gets a bad rap as well. I went to the USC Utah game this past yep. fall and, and I was there for summer league, but just the fall level of, of Salt Lake city was gorgeous. Watching a game there at that stadium um, on the university of Utah campus, you see the mountains in the background. It's just so oh. picturesque and you get totally swept up in it. It is what it is for an all-star location. Did you feel like I've seen a lot of people try to, to back up why Salt Lake city is an all-star location. Is it just super convenient to get around to everything? Yeah, it is. Um, our our hotel and like right down from us is the Players Hotel, which is where the, the, it's like the Hyatt Regency. And then uh, I mean, there's a ton of hotels all within walking distance. Everything's within a mile of the arena, like all the walking like to the main arena, to Vivint Arena. Now they did some of the practices and the G League and the Next Up stuff at the uh, the Huntsman, which is where Utah yeah. plays back. And that's a walk. That's a hike uphill. <laughs> you, no, you gotta take a bus to there. You gotta you gotta take a you gotta take they've got buses running. So like you can you can take a bus there or you can you know you can get an Uber or a Lyft. Um you're right about Utah, like the, the university, that football stadium, you drive by it to get to the Huntsman and yeah. you just see the mountains in the background. Like it looks awesome. It, it was it was stunning. Rice Eccles, uh, the atmosphere took me by surprise. The tailgating, because obviously Utah always gets a knock for like no one drinks, but tailgating was one of my favorite tailgating experiences I've had recently. Um, but ultimately, for All Star period, I thought you were going to say Mount Twelve Ski itself. Did you see it in person? You got jaw gear. You have your jaw ones now. That's which where I had is to go so to get them. That's where I had to go to get them. Yeah. Did I you get it in the ice luge? Yeah. That's how everybody gets them. That's how everybody <sighs> gets them. Everybody gets uh, them. I will tell you, it is uh, Mount Twelvesky. No cap. Goated. Okay. No cap. It is a block for me. It oh. is a block. It is one block for me. And it's still uh, up. I, yeah, it should be. Okay. It should, but they close, so they're not. They're not open today. Gotcha. Um, so we tried to go Saturday afternoon, and they cut off the line. They were supposed to close at six, but they cut off the line at four, so you couldn't get in line after four. They would not let anybody else in line. So we were like, okay, we got to go first thing Sunday morning and go ahead and knock this out. Uh, so we went Sunday morning. We got there at like between 9.15 and 9.30, got in line. They opened at 11. We got in line. There were probably 20 to 30 people in front of us. Um, we got in and out. We were probably out by like 11.45 or noon. So we're in line for two to two and a half hours. Um, yeah, you go in because they only let a few people in at a time and they do the shoes right. They only allow one per pair. They're not going to let somebody come in there, buy 10 pairs of these things and then throw them all on StockX, you know, and, and try to sell them and make and make them, you know, gigantic profit on them. So they allow one pair per person. The midnights were only available through the sneakers app, okay. the Nike sneakers app. You had to go in there. It was only open for like a 15 minute reservation window. You would have to reserve and then you'd have to just hope you get lucky and get them. Um, and so those were all gone. So you could get the scratches and I got the scratches. This is, this is, I have not taken these. I have not taken these out of the box yet. So this is your reveal. This is your unboxing. I, I have opened the box, but I have not taken the shoes out of the box. I have not put the shoes on either, which I don't know if I will, but. Okay. I yeah. saw Dev Devin already had his on. He's out wearing them Devin's about. His, Blevins has worn his. Here Ooh. they are. These are them ski. <laughs> These are them ski. I think ski has taken over. This is a totally unrelated yeah. note, but I was just skimming through TikTok as I do. Those are incredible. And you yeah. know the actress Molly Sims, model Molly Sims, who was on Sports yeah, Illustrated swimsuit a lot. She was on one of my favorite TV shows. Uh, Las, Las Vegas? Vegas. You oh, are a Las Vegas fan? I freaking love Las Vegas. Oh my god. We'll, we'll oh talk about god. this at another love time. But James Molly. <laughs> Molly Sims on TikTok, she was talking about how it's like ski week for her kids and she spelled ski yeah. with two eyes. And I was like, huh, yeah. that's curious. And I looked it up and Molly Sims is from Murray, Kentucky. Where did John Morant go to school? Murray State. I need to find out if Molly Sims is a John Morant fan and that is why she's spelling ski with two eyes or if ski with two eyes has just taken over the world thanks to Ja. Maybe it has. It's possible. Now, 
She has kids, right? She does. She has kids. Kids could be John the kids Moran. are cool. The kids. I mean, there are a lot of kids in this line. There are a lot of I bet. a lot of dads with their kids standing in these lines. It was interesting. You could tell the people who were just getting them to put them on stock X, um, and you could tell the people that you could see the kids, the little kids in line. They're wearing grizzly stuff, or they're wearing jaw stuff. Um, by the way, I met someone in line downstairs yesterday. This young girl. She's probably. I mean, she's like. She had to be between 18 and, like, 22. Just, like, I, I don't know who she is. She's wearing, like, a John ja Morant, like, Grizzlies hoodie. I'm just in line getting a, uh, getting, like, a bottle of water or coffee or something. And she's like, hey, do you work for the Grizzlies in Grind City? And I said, yes, I do. She goes, will you tell everybody I love what they, I love what y'all do? I love y'all. I was like, thank you. Another thing, Salt Lake. Very nice people. The people are nice. <laughs> Look at Roser coming on on a Monday morning to preach about Salt Lake City. That's, I love Salt Lake City. I do. I love this place. I love all of the jog I don't like very weather. much. I don't like the air. Ooh. I I also see Twelski. That's at the back of it. Mount Twelski. That's really yeah. cool. That's it. So they limit the merch you can buy too. They uh -huh. limit the merch. They limit the merch. It's like two or three things per person, merch wise. So <laughs> look at him. But he got all three. He made sure he got the got the shoes. There's the hoodie. Got two other things. Is that it? Is that your whole haul? Yeah, that's my haul. Oh, the, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's cool. It's cool. Oh, I, I, I must, uh, I have to, my best thing I saw this weekend, yeah. Post Malone. I saw really? Post Malone. I saw, I went to, the, I got to go to the TNT party Saturday night. Okay. And Post Malone played for an hour. Whole wow. show. Now, were you a big Post Malone fan prior to this weekend, or did your fandom surge after seeing him live? Yeah, that was the third time I've seen him. Okay. So you're yeah, already was, a fan. Yeah, that was the third time I've seen him. No, he was fantastic. Um, you know, look, it, it's uh, that's the third time I've been to, that's the second time I've been at the TNT party. It's pretty cool if you're, if you're able to get into it. Uh, but Post Malone's a great performer. Like, he's a legit, fantastic performer. Um, so if you ever have a chance to go see him, I would say go see him. Okay, good to know. I have to get your take on one more thing before we let you go. And we have Megan Triplett coming in studio, so it's a very exciting day here. Yeah. On Rise and Grind. But you are Johnny Hustle. And yeah. you were able to follow Kenneth Lofton Jr.'s experience in Salt Lake City throughout this weekend as well. What were your biggest takeaways from him? I know you were able to chat with him after yesterday's G League Showcase yep. game. He had seven points, four rebounds, made a three in the Rising Stars Challenge earlier in the week. Had a little better stat line. Who cares about the stat line? It's about the rising star of yeah. Junior Lofton. Yeah, no. Um, one of the things that I have noticed with him is uh, how much better he has gotten throughout this season and yesterday and that includes being better with the media um the first time i ever talked to to junior you could tell was not really so it's it's not that he he's not rude or anything no he's, he's just not, a quiet dude yeah he was just he's just quiet but there's personality there there's there is a real personality there and you just it takes time to get it out of him you know it's, you, you got to get comfortable and things like that um but he is he's totally comfortable when I told him about Jaron saying he didn't want to, he wouldn't let him babysit his kids, like he just grabbed the microphone from me and said, I, I'm in Memphis full time. I can babysit your kids. I'm great with children. <laughs> if you need me to babysit your kids, let me do it. Like that to me is the, the personality really coming out. And as far as his game goes, um, he is coming, he's making strides defensively. Look, he's not going to be, he's never going to be Jaron Jackson Jr. or Ben Wallace defensively or anything, but. Can you be a capable defender that, you know, has an awareness of what you're supposed to be doing and what your role is going to be? And uh, he's come a long way there. And I think his passing has come a really long way uh, when, you know, he used to get the ball at the beginning of the season. He would always get the ball and he'd just try to go score. Like, he'd just get the ball, put his head down and go score, which is which led to turnovers, teams just collapsing on him. Um he has gotten so much more patient. He waits for cutters to move through. Um makes his reads so i i think he he has shown i've been really really happy with with uh with lofton jr and the promise that he has shown this season like i don't know if it means he's going to be playing big minutes like for the grizzlies next season like santi aldama in his second season but um there's something there and i think the grizzlies know there's something there and uh yeah i i, I think they're gonna you know he's only on a one-year two-way deal mm -hmm. so he's either gonna 
they'll either sign him to another one or they're going to put him on the main roster next year would be my guess. Yeah. And just the, the exuberance, like even when you talk about him being kind of a quiet guy, you saw yeah. that personality. That's why he fans were so quick to dub him someone that they loved because his personality yeah. came out through his play. And now you're yeah. getting it through interviews as well, which has been a really fun development as you get to learn a little bit more about him. One last – go ahead. Oh no! I need to give. I, I when I when I showed you the jaws, I forgot to tell you this. This is a PSA for any. No, no, no. This is this is. You need to know this. Okay. Um, Devin told us, and um, Chris confirmed it yesterday, and we, there were other people in line who had con and gotten the shoes earlier. Yeah. And they came back at the next day to get more to get yeah. another pair. Size up. Oh. Size up. At least a half size. Size up. They're okay. snug. Yeah. So this size is good. up. Good so I wear a 10, I got a 10 and a half. When I get mine and can only wear the left one for the foreseeable future, <laughs> I will absolutely <laughs> size up. One more fit related because, you know, you're a big fit guy. What did you think of Jaron Jackson Jr.'s winter wonderland walk-in outfit for his first all-star appearance yesterday i believe we have a photo of it or a video of it or both i loved it give me every furry hooded coat this was from high school onward i love me a good furry fitted coat and jaron just had all the fits throughout the weekend like these like that netted one, pants that cool. yes love that the was, the pants there i would wear but like, you'd wear it, this hell no i can't pull that off look how that, warm it would be he can't pull that off either. That looks ridiculous. Okay, he can pull it off, which I think no, is why people... Can. Yes, he can. He can if, you, if he was not named Jaron Jackson Jr. and was not an NBA All-Star and you saw some dude walking down the street wearing that, you would not think that, oh, that is drippy. No, I would, you yes, I would, I would think it was drippy and I would think he was famous. If I saw someone wearing that in Salt Lake City, Utah, or in Park City, Utah, where all the rich people go hang out, I'd be like, Ooh, that, oh, that person I is somebody. Had a Lyft driver yesterday pick me and Steph up after the next up game. He picked us up in like a brand new like decked out suburban so i was like okay this is like this dude ain't just giving people normal like regular people lift rides if he's driving this car he said he drives people to and from park city all the time i said who famous and he goes he said i drive conan o'brien all the time pulled up his phone multiple pictures he goes he doesn't even contact the service he just calls me directly whenever he's coming in town and i pick him up I'm sure, I'm, like, I'm sure Conan awesome. loves the random Lyft driver who shows his photos to random other people as they drive well, throughout like, Salt Lake City. All the time, every time now. So they're like, cool, yeah. All uh, right, Roser, Megan Triple just walked in studio. So we got to take a quick break hi, and get to her. Roser says hi. We'll be back with Megan on the other side here on Rise and Grind. It is time to talk about who you want to see in the dunk contest because that's really the competition that matters the most. Ja's not on my list. Ja is on my list. Yeah, I he mean, won't do it. No, he's talked about what would what it would take for him to do it. He's like three mil. Like he's not going to do it. I think if he was in it, he would win. But I, I also feel like there's nothing for him to win anymore. Like he's already won. The he knows. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. I am a Joe on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. Eight-time Grammy Award-winning Anita Baker. Anita Baker, the songstress, live in concert for one night only. FedEx Forum, November 22nd, 2023. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss your chance to see the legendary Anita Baker live in Memphis. Rob, let's hear some, yeah. can we get some nugs? Points scored during the NFL playoffs. Memphis, number two on the list. Ah. That's because Jake Elliott and Riley Patterson. Rosa, you don't have to rain on the parade. That's because, yeah. Yeah, no kidding, Roser. No pooping on nuggets. Put that as the title of the show this week. Get your sports betting picks and trends with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, CJ Hurt, and John Roser, the odds couple. Now live every Thursday at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media and YouTube. Everybody always brings you up as one of the great trash talkers ever. Who was the best one to you? To Who me, did you the, think is the best talker? Larry Bird would tell you where he's going to shoot it in your face. He'd tell you you give you a Christmas gift. He said, I'm going to shoot it right here, and then I'm going to shoot it in the neck. going to just say, Shoo! and I guarantee you that. 
and he would go in that spot and shoot it in your face and do that. The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on GrindCityMedia.com or wherever you get your podcasts. It is an all-star Monday following All-Star Weekend. And Megan Triplett's in studio. We're not going to waste any time. Welcome back. How does it feel to be in your seat? It feels weird. Does it? Feels it feels weird. <laughs> I will say that drive was like, oh, man, I forgot how long this drive was. But only for you all. Right. For the Monday after All-Star. During my vacation, as I call it, vacation, um, when I come in. It is your All-Star break. Yes. As well. I know. I texted you. I was like... If you want to come on, sure. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to make the drive from Collierville no. to downtown, it was please great. don't. I got my, I picked up my Starbucks, walked across the street, got good. that, and I'm all good. I'm all set now. What have you been up to on this since little I've been break? Home? Yeah, since you've been home. Let's see. Let's see here. We slept a lot. Went to Piccadilly, of course. I'm trying to think. I ate at Stony River. Ate of at course. Houston's. Um, have not made my way over to Southern Hands. That's tomorrow because okay. hair appointments tomorrow. So hair and Southern Hands go hand in hand. We celebrated my dad's birthday yesterday, so we did church. Um, going to Boonville, Mississippi, to see Mama Triplet today. Yes. After this, uh, we'll hang out with her. She had a birthday last week, so oh. you know the usual stuff that I normally did when I lived here. It's no nothing. Costco. I have not gone to Costco. Oh. I have not gone to Costco yet. Tragic. So it is. I go to Costco in Brooklyn. There's a okay. Costco in Brooklyn right across the street from the Nets training facility. So when there is practice, it's like a thing. I'm like, oh, I'm going across the street to Costco. So I still get the same <laughs> like high off of Costco. It's a two floor Costco too. Ooh, yeah. that's a New York City Costco right there. It's a New York City Costco. CJ, how familiar are you with Jonathan Majors and his work, Megan? Oh my oh, gosh! Yeah, we have well, to talk to you. I saw this text message. Is my head cut off, or is that just the TV? Yeah, it's cut off. We can move. Oh, we'll okay. move the camera down. I was it's like, fine. I was like, oh wow, it's right there. Okay. Um, They're not used to someone so tall sitting in that <laughs> seat at this point. <laughs> Who have you guys had? Uh, Lang, Gary sits in that seat. Okay. Uh, Fish will sit in that seat occasionally. Who else sits in you that have, seat? You guys have a lot of. Shows. Will Coleman, he's tall. He is tall. Your friend Will, he, he joins us. Now. He, he I cooks saw. for us. He told me about it. And you have a lot of shows now that come out of the studio. Infinite shows. I know. It's like I left and then it just grows. Hey, hey wait a second. Jarvis wait, Greer wait, works wait, out of the wait, studio wait, now. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody works out of the studio. What's up with you and Jonathan Majors? Can we make that happen? I don't know Jonathan Majors. I saw Jessica's text message about like he likes to make potatoes and french fries. He goes and buys the potatoes yeah. and then makes homemade frites himself. And I saw this and I, I was already thinking like, Wow, Jonathan Majors, yeah. what a catch. And then I saw that he makes his own French fries. And I thought to myself, hmm, he's 35. He okay. fits in a great age range. I have not determined yet if he wears a cross or not. Okay. I'm still no investigating that piece of it. Okay. But he is very, he's like a thinker. He has biceps for days, but he's got a brain, Megan. Like, okay. he's a published poet. Okay, how tall is Jonathan Majors? I saw him sitting courtside oh. at, at All Star. Oh, what? The CJ, how did you forget about the height? I know, There's I know, like, I know. Please hold, please hold. Did I was I gone for too long? Jonathan Majors is. There are five in front of it. Six feet. Mm. Oh, oh, Could have rounded up. Oh, we don't know. Oh. He he hits the six. I hit the six. I know. I feel like actually. <laughs> Jessica's being kind of generous. No, okay. no, Google says six. Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking I'm at celebrity I'm height. I'm looking that way because I know CJ's going to definitely. Celebrity so no, height says no. 5, 11 and a quarter. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I forgot about the height restriction, Megan. My bad. I mean, my you bad. have to love, but like, yeah, if you could have definitely guaranteed that there was a cross somewhere. And then you, you already guaranteed the French fries. And you've guaranteed the briefcase. He's a working actor. He, he had a job. <laughs> That works Can too. He's so hot right now. He is. I, I, so what, 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 is, what is he on? He's in, in the new Marvel Ant-Man Quantumanium. Mm-hmm. He's the v- new Marvel villain. Don't tell her that. And then he's also going to be in Creed 3, yes, with Michael okay. B. Jordan. Look at me talking Marvel like I know what I'm talking about. Now, Michael B. Jordan said that he was single and he was on Raya. Okay, Why that's fine. That to me? But, like, Jonathan Major. Michael B. Jordan is in six feet. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, he has he's this got conversation. Six in front of it. He's got a six in front of it. Uh, Don't believe it. Michael B. Jordan height. He and Jonathan Majors are the same height. If they say no, so according to celeb heights, Michael Here B. Jordan go. is five ten and a half. There you go. 
There you goodness. go, Megan. We're full three quarters inches shorter what than is Jonathan happening Majors. To the world. What is happening to the world? Yeah. Anyway, we just want you to know that did, we did have I been come on the show for my for, for my dating. Yes, yes. Who are we've you? been looking for look you. Yeah, the, Jonathan Majors, come on out, meet Megan Triplett. No, we just want you to know that like, we're still working for okay, you, perfect. even though you don't work with us. Is this your first time seeing CJ since you left? Is my first time seeing CJ? No. Oh. She saw me when she came back. She came back to do the net stuff. And then she saw me. Oh, that's right. Well, oh, that was the first that was game like of the way season. Back in like November, October. Or not the first November. game, first week of the season. It was our first road game. So that was way long ago. The Nets have changed. I was going to say you have an entire yeah. different team. What has that been yeah. like during this period of time with and overall, or just the last two weeks? <laughs> Let's go with just the last two okay, weeks perfect. because that's the the yeah. current relevant piece of it. With Kyrie going to the Mavs, mm-hmm. with KD going to Phoenix, and now you're left with. A very new looking team, but from like your job perspective, how has that been handling that transition? Job wise, it's been like okay. Yeah. You know, it's just like the, the it's basketball, it's the business of, of the game of it all. But I will say that even like I say I should have the same sentiment sentiments that the players shared where it was shocking. I mean, yeah, you heard the rumblings during the off season, but we kind of got past that. We kind of got past a lot of the drama. And then you saw how when KD was playing great, Kyrie was playing great when KD was out. Um, in your head, you, you, I think everyone kind of moved on mentally. Of course, everyone goes through their own thing personally. You don't know what, what everyone's going through behind closed doors. So it was a very shocking day to like wake up. I think the, the, the Friday that came out that Kyrie had requested a trade request, you're like, oh, you know, you knew the trade de- deadline was coming up. But for the Nets, it was all about could there very well be some movement to get another big? It was never about, you know, Kyrie and KD. And then you saw the domino effect of, okay, once Kyrie happened, and then it happened so quickly, and the, the way it happened, and, like, the team that he went to and all that. I think at that point in your head you knew that there was a possibility that KD might be the one to go next. Um, even from the same things that KD shared with when he went to the Suns during his press conference, he really does love Brooklyn. You always got that. You always felt that from him. So it was a little surprise, but I think those like trade at deadlines on Thursday. I think from the Tuesday until the Friday, it was like that grieving process. But then when you figure out like who you're who you're getting, you kind of had to mourn what was old and kind of you kind of got excited for what's new because you got some young guys who yeah. are so exciting. They're, like when you talk to them, interview them, they make you kind of forget about everything, but you do have to kind of start this new fresh era and have to forget everything that happened because the team is drastically different. I mean, when you have a guy like Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on your roster, I mean, the expectations are probably a little different than what you have now, but work-wise, it was okay. I do think that the other weeks before prepared me for everything, so the season has been an up and down roller coaster of a ride. How much is a slice of pizza in a Costco at New York? At Costco? Yeah. It's is, is it still like a dollar fifty? Yeah, it is. Costco $1. is $1. universal. Hot dog, like universal, no matter what. So, yeah, I've only gotten so it once. You make New York City money and are paying Memphis Costco prices for hot dogs and pizza. Get yeah. out of here. She has to make up for it for the New York City rent. Rent. That's very true. <laughs> That's very true. But I will say, like, I've gone on. I've done a lot of um, pizza tours. Mm. Um, and for that, that's like a thing that I do now. So there's yeah. some, there is some great pizza. Do you have um, a favorite that you're ready to right declare? Right now is um, artichoke pizza. <laughs> it's called the place is called. I don't eat artichokes, but I know I have to tell the you. The place is called artichoke pizza. I'll tell you off air. I have a very funny artichoke pizza story. But I love artichoke okay. pizza. I would go. I would go out of my way yeah. to get the artichoke artichoke pizza because I love artichokes. Oh, you like artichokes? Yes. I, won't, I won't go out and get the artichoke pizza. I've seen it, but this is how this is how crazy it is. They only take cash. Um, so I went to the bank the other day in Memphis and I got cash. And I was like, why do you need cash? You never like cash. I was like, oh, just in case I get when I get pizza. So I have, I have cash on standby for when I get back to Brooklyn just so I just thought I could have it. Incredible. I, real, real quick. So I was in New York on a trip once and mm. I was with two friends who lived in New York and another friend who they didn't know. And we had dinner reservations somewhere, but things kept getting pushed back. So we we're like, let's just get a piece of pizza before we go out for the night. And one of my friends was like, there's a Domino's around the corner. Like, let's just grab a slice. It's quick. It's easy. And the other girl was like, Domino's in New York City? Yeah. You're not a real New Yorker. We have to go to artichoke pizza and now like to this day i will text the other two friends randomly anytime i see an artichoke pizza it's i'm like good. please remember we have to go it is to good. artichoke pizza it is good i recommend everyone going it's like 
one is like three blocks from my place. So it's convenient. So it's very, very convenient. Um, I tried a new place last week called Roberta's Pizza in Williamsburg, and that's really good. They have one in L.A. They just, they just opened one in L.A. Met the owner. Very, very lovely family. <laughs> Great pe- pizza was really, really good. They gave you these little sticky buns, Ooh. and that was good as well. So I'm just like, you know, venturing. I have, I've adventured a lot more in my food stuff. You have to travel so much with your job, yeah. so you're not in Brooklyn all no. the time. But does it feel home? Uh, Memphis is always going to be like your home home, yeah. right? But have you at least shifted into a space where it feels normal yet? It feels normal. Brooklyn feels very normal. Okay. Because I feel like that's that's where the majority of my time is spent. You know, like when you go, when we talk about like Manhattan and like the other, you know, surrounding boroughs, that does not feel normal. But Brooklyn does feel normal. My place is starting to feel like a home. I've gotten really close with like certain people in my building. Um, there's a cold stone across the street that I've gotten really close to people that work there as well. <laughs> um, so it's, it does feel like home. It does. It's, it's still different. It's still very, very different. But I feel like I'm, like, close to it. I feel like I have two homes now. I feel like I'm just, like, you know, bi-coastal. Uh-huh. We'll get named Boogie and Bougie. <laughs> um, yes, so there, there, there are a couple the of things that we need. New York. There are a couple of things that we need you to, to settle for okay. us from a pop culture standpoint. Oh, perfect. Uh, one. People only want to talk about basketball with me. Is, and I'm, like, uh, so no, no, no. excited. Is, is Kelly Clarkson yeah. a top 200 vocalist? All time. Top 200? Top 200. Uh-huh. I would say time. yes. Yes! You don't think she's a top 200? No, because like, she's not. You're saying 200. Yes, she is. Are, don't, don't overthink it. Just thinking, go with your like, gut. You think there's like 199 people who are... She is a top I think, 200 I think it's about 300 people better, no, but whatever. No, she's great. There's, no. a, there's an Instagram account that settles this. I don't know why I saw this one time, but it was like someone else was having... This, was this a thing or something? So, but, Rolling Stone came out with their list of top 200 singers of all time. Kelly Clarkson was not on that list. I came well, on the show. Or she was. She was what? 193. She yeah, was think, towards the uh, bottom. Yeah. I think she was one of the most disrespected yeah. vocalists Do on that list. Do you listen to Kelly That's what Kelly I have sent show? him. Kelly Oki after Kelly Oki. I have after listened to Kelly Oki. It's not she's, that great. She it's, is. It's, 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 she's a good singer. Don't get me wrong. Tell me someone I that love was... Since You've Been Gone. That's great. She but does... top 200, no. No, she can do... A, she can like... No, she she is definitely... Is. Who was on there that should not have been on there? She shouldn't have been on Don't there. What do you mean? Taylor Swift was on there. Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift was on there. A vocalist? Yes, yes. a vocalist. And I disagree a with that. A vocalist? Uh-huh. A writer, Great performer, yes. great writer, yeah. straight vocals. They have Beyonce top 10. I would, okay, put, we uh, can, I, would, I would put Beyonce like top 50. I'm not sure about that. That's top how 10. I felt top about that. Yeah. We're talking about like, in all the world. Of all like, time. Like from, like ni- from like the 1900s to like now. I mean, I don't know any vocalists from the 1800s. but Me either, but I'm just saying like, are we talking about like forever and ever? Yes. All, mm. all we needed to know was that your first gut instinct was yes, which yeah, settles anything, a Kelly running. Can go and vote Kelly, Clark- Kelly Clarkson definitely is a better. No knock to Taylor Swift. Yeah. Yeah. Better than Taylor Swift? As a vocalist? Oh, better, better than Taylor Swift. Okay. So if but if, that, if that's Did the you standard, not hear a moment like this listen, on I'm American... She is yeah. the American Idol. If you will let me speak, Jessica I Benson, can't. I would. I will say, fine, yeah, she's better than Taylor Swift. She's not top 200. That's all beside the point. Megan, I yeah. know you'll agree with me on this. Okay. The halftime show, well, eh, it was a man. I will it not wasn't that good. bad about Rihanna because the girl was pregnant. Thank you. And I think, I, here's what I would say about the Super Bowl halftime show. I spent live majority of those 10 minutes trying to figure out, is she pregnant or not pregnant? So I didn't take it all in because there's moments where I was like, she's got to be right, or she is. And I, and I blame, I, I think they did a great job. I do blame some of the, um, the videographers and like producing wise, because I do think her belly rub was just not as prominent. Mm. They kept, they kept uh, going away to another shot. So once you found out that she really was pregnant and then you had to rewatch it, you will appreciate it more. Because all, all I kept saying in my head was like, look, I couldn't do half the stuff that she was doing not pregnant. So I definitely couldn't do it pregnant as well. But I think if you watch it now with the eyes of, oh, this, this is a person who is pregnant, then I think it's very, very different. Did I want one person to come out? Yes. Not going to lie. Like, I think like she can obviously like, carry her own. We were reminded of all the hits that, that she does have. But it would have been nice if just like I mean Jay was already there, and there's moments where it was like those two songs were like I mean he could just like pop down real quick, 
and then pop off the stage real quick. I would have just appreciated one person. Doesn't that speak even more? To, like, she didn't want anyone True. there. Well, which, she had somebody there with exa- her. That was her surprise <laughs> guest. That was it. I'm, I think people need to, as in people, I mean, CJ needs to go back and rewatch it because I think the pregnancy thing, you have to reevaluate yeah. with new eyes. And then also the expectations of like what you thought it was going to be versus yeah. what it was. It was way like... I don't want to say chiller. There was still energy behind it, but it wasn't star-studded guest list, well, dance party. Of what we had, here's a hard part. Is that you're coming off of what we had. If this was like after the weekend, we would have loved it. The right. weekend was like, I just didn't care for it. But if it's, but you're coming off of probably one of the most epic performances that we, that we just had in LA where you had like the top of the top and so many people come out. So it's very, it's really, really hard to go from that to this. I and mean, even, even, even coming off of that, you had, uh, J Lo and Shakira. We're so used to having multiple stars. We're not used to just having one person. So it's kind of it, it was kind of it wasn't a letdown, but as you mentioned, like, the expectations were so high because we haven't seen Rihanna on stage in a very very long time. We didn't quite know what was going on because now I'm living in a very safe world where you didn't want to say it, but you didn't want to say it. I was even doing the math. I was like, when did she have the last baby? Mm-hmm. Which in my head, I thought the baby was three months old. I had no idea she had the baby, that she had that baby in May. I was like, what? Time has fl- is like flying, number one. So you spent all the time. I was on Twitter, like kept refreshing, waiting for someone else to say it. Like I wasn't going to say it. I was just like, look, I'm just happy she's out there. But regardless if she mm-hmm. is or she's not, She's doing a great job. I can't do half those moves anyway. It would like I'm marking them too. She's dangling from the sky. We got the most epic shot ever when the when the camera zoomed out. I'll take it. And then you had her her man like cheering her on. We all want someone like that in our lives. You know, like Chris yeah. cheers you on like that. Yes. We're all waiting. Well, I guess I'll say I am waiting for someone to cheer me Jonathan on. Jonathan like Majors. Yeah. It's too short. We all want somebody like that, but they've got to be to the over six board. feet. But listen. We we've seen people do solo shows before, and it was better than that. It was you can't. But it's Super how, Bowl. It's how, Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl halftime show. How long ago? You can't just pop up and be pregnant. Like that's that's just oh, not yes, going to work. Hold that's on, not, hold on. That's not going to work. She can't control it. Where, how, when or who? Exactly. How? What? What happens? She can control. Body. No, it we don't. I'm not, I'm not talking about yeah. the break. It's great. Women put your bodies through so much. I love women. I appreciate everything that you've done to get but the population here. But when was the last great solo show? The last one. Like Prince, Pluto. what are you talking? Prince, Prince Beyonce, the- May- oh, right. Beyonce may as well have been solo. Bruno Mars was superb. He, sure, he brought out Red Chili, Red Hot Chili Peppers, but we weren't excited. Last- we weren't excited about the Red Hot Chili Peppers. We were excited because Bruno Mars gave us a show. Kelly, not Kelly Clarkson. What's the other one? <laughs> Katy Kelly Perry. On the brain. Was she uh, by herself? Right. Katy Perry brought out Missy Elliott, Missy. but we're not yeah. talking about Missy Elliott. We're talking but we about did, but we what, did, we at did the time. talk about it. But there are other things you can talk about other than oh, this is who that person brought out as a guest. Katy Perry came out on a walking freaking tiger. We had all the stuff going on with but, all the shit. You know like there, there are things you, you can do. You gotta pay do. for that too. And I think Rihanna is the, is the ultimate businesswoman of all. But that's why she is a billionaire. That's mm-hmm. why. That's why she's gonna be the first one. She's the first. She's the first halftime performer to perform as a billionaire. Correct? Yes, and it's her birthday today. So is what we're birthday? not gonna oh do is no, slander Riri. Rihanna. Riri, 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 I know you have to get on the road you. to Mama Triplet, oh, but I will. I've until ten thirty. I just knew that, like how I am okay. walking out of this building, but no one's here. So it's, it's a holiday, exactly. But yeah. we're here, so I can ask you. Other than CJ's very important things that we needed to get your take on, is there a favorite story in pop culture that you're following right now? A favorite story in pop culture that I am following. What the real housewives do? Are Ben and Jen still in love? Yes. Even though we've caught all of these asides of very awkward I interactions. Think what we've caught is a normal relationship. And that's what I appreciate the most. It's like what man like, you know, we've all dr- we've all we've all, we've all had to like drag a, us our, our significant other somewhere that probably yes. didn't really really want to go anyway and we see their we see their facial expressions we like hit them like stop like just like you know have fun would you so like i think what we caught was just them like loving each other being normal they were looking for houses well, i don't know why i know this they're looking for houses last weekend and the house is gorgeous i saw it <laughs> yes. so, so it's kind of like i think they're just a normal relationship so i i have been following them I'm trying to think of like the craziest stuff i think the month of february was just a crazy was a great time of like Black History Month, Black Excellence, Black Magic. When you think about Beyonce and the Grammys, um, you think about like Jay Z and like LeBron and how how many things Jay Z has his hands on from like the Super Super Bowl to like even last night to voicing the LeBron special video as well um, to even seeing like like the All Star game. I think there's just been a lot of just so much black magic that I've just been like sitting myself into and just like taking it all in. Even like. 
you know, I know we, the Grizzlies have done an excellent job with HBCU night and excellent job with Black History Month. It's, it's been really cool to see how other teams do Black History Month and like the, um, how significant HBCUs are even in Brooklyn and seeing all that. So I don't, I can't think of a crazy, I've been a Beyonce, like just like fiend right now. You got the tickets. Did you get tickets? No. I did not get tickets because uh, the nosebleed section in uh, what's the place in New Jersey where they're doing it at MetLife? Yeah, it was like four hundred dollars for like nosebleeds, and I just felt as if like you know, you know, I've seen it twice. It. Unless I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray. I was gonna off say someone calls me and says like, "Girl, I got some free tickets." You gotta find some way to let everyone in Brooklyn know that. Yes, you talk basketball, but... I do talk entertainment yes. as well. What's been crazy going on in the entertainment world? Did you read Prince Harry's book? Girl. No. Oh, yeah. Did you watch the... <laughs> Thank you, CJ. <laughs> Obviously, people are forgetting sorry, who I am. Sorry, sorry. Let me yes. rephrase. Did you watch the six-part Megan and Harry documentary? I watched two episodes of it. I never started it. I couldn't do it. The, the two episodes I saw were really good. I will okay. give them that. I saw, I saw were really good. I am here for them. Like, I, I agree with you. I agree with a lot of people who are in the sense of, like, okay, like, why are we still talking about this if it's not a thing? But I, what I do appreciate is from the two episodes that I did watch, what I gathered from it is when his mother passed away, so many people and still are telling her story. You have so many Lifetime specials. You have so many, team, so many The Crown yeah. are telling her story. She never got to tell her story. So what I do appreciate is that Megan and Harry are saying, we're going to have our own narrative and we're going to put our, our story out there before y'all tell it for us. So that's what I appreciate because I'm like, look how many things have we seen from Princess Diana. And at the end of the day, we're never, we've never gotten it from her. And she's, she's, she's gone or even getting it from like Harry and William, like their side of the story. We've gotten, what was that horrible movie that you told me to watch with Kristen Stewart? Kristen Stewart oh my gosh, yes. But that, was, but that was not... Horrible. That was a Don't reimagined Princess Diana. Yeah, but um, it's just like... God, what was that called? Spencer. Yeah, Spencer. It was like a horror movie. It was awful. It was great. It was horrible. I loved it. I was like, what am I the watching? The discomfort. Is this a within it, I thought it, en- it encaps- No, it encapsulated the horror movie that became Diana's life towards the latter well, portion of her life. that and thinking that like, that could be really real? It kind of was. We don't know because we can't talk to her. Yeah, but it's the assumption. <laughs> So instead, we get to listen to, which I'm. I agree with yeah. you on that part. Like we're so, just as like a nosy society, all these yeah. years later, like we still want to know what, like what was the true story. And right now, it feels like the truest version we can get is Prince Harry because he's now out of the institution mm-hmm. of the royal family and has a freer voice in what he's able to share. But there's still so much that we'll never know. Like I watch The Crown, like it's a damn documentary. But it's not. And it's not. It's not. It's so no. It's no truer than Spencer to some degree. That's why I don't mind like Harry writing his book or like them doing a documentary special and then like you know sitting down talking about how lo- in love they are all the time and like they just love each other and la la la. I'm cool with it. I am cool with it. I haven't really followed too much entertainment stories. I think mainly because um, the Nets have been their own yes. entertainment <laughs> story. Like it just really, it really is. Like it's the one thing I will say about like being in New York City is like for some of these guys it's. You have basketball and you have entertainment combined in one. And so it's kind of like you, I, in a way, I kind of got best of both worlds of things yeah. that I both like because I've been able to follow, like, you know, very closely and like with my own, own eyes seeing it. It's like both. I'm like, I feel like I'm living in it. So it, that's what I have followed the most. Do you feel like since you are in one of the biggest markets, the biggest market, mm-hmm. are the Grizzlies the most hated team in the NBA? No. <laughs> that's what I think. I don't think so at all. I will say this. I think um, if people around me hate the Grizzlies I think everyone knows not to tell me that good so I will say that I think I think um everyone that I like I interact with in New York knows that my like my heart is in two different places and so like I will I am a Nets fan I am a Grizzlies fan too so you can't talk about you can't talk bad to me about the Grizzlies you can't talk bad to me about Memphis you can't talk bad to me about the Nets you're not gonna get anything um negative out of me from that I I love the Nets. I've had great interactions with Katie. I've had great interactions with Kyrie. They're they're great people. They have they have great families, and super happy for them for them to do what's best for them as they move on. I was a little salty about it. Yeah, I was like, yo, like we we were we were we had a family, but you know you gotta go do your own thing. Same thing for here. If you want to, people always ask me about the Grizzlies. Like, oh, was it really like this? And I'm like, look, like it's a family there too, and you just don't know when you're on the outside looking in. It looks a certain way, but it's like not like that at all. But I don't think they're the their most hated team. Now I will say. It's good to think that you are one because use it 
use that for motivation and like let it fuel you. It's the same thing with the Nets. Everyone talks bad about them and you're, they're using that for motivation. Now people are like, oh, the expectations are gone. And it's like, no, we still have, we still have a lot of great players on this team. Now you're, just, you're starting over. Can you build a new era and figure it out in this last couple of stretches of games? So it's the same thing. So I love it. This was a very fun Monday. Yeah. We will let you get on the road. But thanks for driving all the way back from Collierville. I know. One more time. I see a crane. What are they building We'll make over you here? do it again. Um, it's like going down slowly. I don't know. I can't see it. I and like, I what's, can't. What's downtown Memphis doing? I've heard Constantly some good, great moving. food places. Which yes, one? Congratulations on I have two two home buyer a homeowners next to me. You sure do. Meanwhile, I can't even afford anything. You'll be renting forever. I'm renting Brooklyn. forever in New York City. <laughs> That's a parking so. garage. Oh yeah, the parking garage has gone up quick. Um, most of if you see something being built, chances are it's a parking garage. What new restaurant have you heard about most? Um, what's that one in German Limelight? I don't know. I'm downtown or bust right yeah, now, and now I don't. Yeah, like this little cute little place, like Limelight. Ooh. They turned it. It used to be the little burger place across from Germantown, Germantown High School that you can't get a reservation right now. Okay. It's like um, that's what I heard that I want to go to. I guess all of mine are like out east. Mm. Toast. In Germantown, I've heard about okay. next to my yeah, place. Yeah, heard that one. We just um, a new place called the Lobbyist just opened up down mm-hmm. here, which is pretty good in the old um, Life Kitchen. Oh, Life Kitchen. Do something with that. Finally got some someone new in there. Was really bummed. Gray Canary closed. It's quite sad. I heard about that. I, never, I heard the fries were good. I never got a chance to eat them. They were. I heard that. Um, what did they turn the Spendini into? It's turning into Felicia Suzanne's. It's opening. Oh, okay. Felicia Suzanne's moved from. North Main uh-huh. to that location. Smart. Yeah, Smart so movie. that'll open this summer. So I used to like spending all kinds of things when you come back and visit this I summer. Know. Good food, good things to eat. So it's works out perfectly. Exactly. I, know I'll be back. I know you will. All right, we will catch up with you next time. Megan Triplett back in her rightful seat with the sign behind her still saying <laughs> "Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan forever like and left. always." It is like you never left. It has been a very busy show. Big thanks to GP. Big thanks to Roser, both joining us virtually today. We will be back on Tuesday to talk about everything we missed from today because there's still a lot of it to get into. Everyone have a wonderful rest of your Monday. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching Rise and Grind. Tune in tomorrow at 8 o'clock to hear more from Jessica right here on Grind City Media. So, Megan, we do this thing now where we talk at the end of the show. So after the guy reads the announcement, we start talking. Is there anything you would like to say? I would like to say that you guys are doing a great job on Rising Grind. Justin's bought a condo, CJ's.